Hi, I am together with Sezgin Lule of Ishbank in Ishbank's uh, Istanbul headquarters to discuss Ishbank's uh, RPA journey. Hi, Sezgin. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, having us uh, in your uh, headquarters. Uh, could you please uh, introduce yourself and Ishbank today? Yeah, thank you, thank you. As you already said, I'm part of Ishbank, which is one of the largest private banks in Turkey. I lead the Enterprise Architecture Division, which is mainly responsible for the organizational change, process improvement, digitalization, and like automation. Thank you. So Ishbank has become one of the largest RP implementations in Turkey so far, as you know. Uh, so uh, what business outcomes have you achieved with RPA and how do you measure success? Okay, indeed, uh, we were the very early adopters of RPA in the Turkish financial services industry. Uh, actually, we started at the beginning at the core of our central operations processes and then gradually expanded uh, the RPA uh, and deployment into branch processes and headquarter functions. Uh, as of today, we target to actually reach a level of 10 million transactions a year, which is massive if you compare to our competitors here in Turkey. And uh, of course, this translates into like almost 200 FTEs. If you look at from this perspective, the efficiency gain is very obvious. It is, this is very strong actually. But of course, the only business outcome, it's not to measure it only in terms of FTEs. What we also enjoy is it's an is its influence in terms of cultural change as well because the positioning here of RPA in Ishbank is to really target those uh, standard repetitive tasks that would like mostly regarded as dismotivational or I would say a kind of operation burner burden on the employees okay so RPA is kind of a uh, like life-saving activity or a tool here, which actually release such kind of activities. Uh, the, the burden, it, really, it, it, it uh, releases the burden on employees, which enables them to be more creative, to fulfill their potential. It also brings about engagement as well. Uh, we also see that people are uh, very, uh, very happy to uh, kind of uh, leverage this kind of capability in the bank because uh, at the end of the day when you just uh, throughout the journey it's been almost four years we, we embarked on this journey we reach we reached a level of a point where we, we can just you know, safely say that we have this capability we build up this capability in the bank internal capability internal mm -hmm. capability in the bank uh, and the empowered our people in terms of just using this RPA tool that just helps them to uh, unleash the potential, to fulfill their potential in terms of being more creative and just getting rid of those, you know, boring stuff in the bank. So this aspect is also very important in our case. Especially we have been observing uh, for the last year, you have been exhilarated, right? So since you have started, I think it's in 2017, and uh, the last year was really very fast uh, in terms of RPA uh, deployment in the organization. Yeah, in fact, that, that was right, because at the very beginning, we, we, we just formed a very little team here. Then we discovered uh, that if you somehow bundle this uh, transformational initiative together with the idea of agility, you know, bringing this idea into an agile team, so we particularly established a tribe, an automation tribe for this. Like there's multiple squads, like 40, 50 people coming together, including the business people together with the RPA developers and our IT guys. So everybody on the same uh, environment, on the same table sitting together. And that really, you know, just facilitates this idea of transformation to really spot uh, what is going wrong? What's the problem? You know, how we can resolve it? You know? So that has been a very uh, good catalyst or you know, facilitator in terms of scaling up. So in the last two years, 
changing the modus operandi into an agile environment, bringing about you know all the required skill set into one page. So that really accelerated it, as you were right. And it's currently also we are setting up different teams in different parts of the organization, making sure the journey continues yeah. <laughs> as planned. Yeah. And one other thing is that it's not only agility. We also have this different model of creating a center of excellence that is uh, just that feels responsible of uh, establishing the community, the RPA community, which means that trying to reach different parts of the organization to just ordinary business uh, people that have the problem. And just, you know, in terms of training, in terms of engagement, try to understand what the real problem in the field is. So that brings about some like hidden potential, some hidden cases that could be easily resolved. And just also enabling them to uh, talk about, uh, to use this RPA tool as part of their uh, transformation as well. So this has been very powerful. One other thing in the last two years, so digitalization is a like common theme, you know, everywhere. If you go to the financial service industry, anywhere, or all or any different Everybody's country, talking about it. Yeah, yes. it's, it's just, you know, phenomenon that uh, that's currently prevailing in the organizations uh, we have this digital transformation committee which is led by our ceo so this is like a platform where you, it's like an agora i would say yeah. like different all different business units you know being presented on the same environment of course the recent ones due, due to pandemics is being done online so we have it's, it's become a digital experience know how sharing and why I'm still so, working though. Still, of course, it's still uh-huh. ongoing. So it's like ongoing. I don't know why we are doing this <laughs> face to face, but, but the audience will be online anyway. Right? anyway. So this will be endless. I oh, guess. yeah. So you have been, uh, you know, sharing some of the best practices in uh, within your uh, conversation. Um, what would be the remedy for a successful implementation from your experience? Yeah, I was just going to spot on that one. Like in terms of positioning, we have this transformation uh, platform uh, and RPA, AI, all these just transformative initiatives are a standing agenda. So uh, we have regular reports, regular, where we share the business outcomes together with the business unit. So usually it's normal to see, you know, some business leaders presenting their uh, outcomes themselves. So that brings in engagement as well. And, you know, the top management support is very important in those areas because uh, we have come to a point where we, s- we said, okay, it's not only repetitive tasks that we should uh, pursue. It's also a different part of the organization that should benefit from this uh, transformational tool as well. And yeah, just bringing, leveling different speeds of change within the organization. That's very, it's a, you need balance. So you cannot just let only one part fully utilizing, leveraging the uh, benefits of RPA, but others are left kind of behind. Because at some point, this, ten, uh, this kind of friction or imbalance would uh, create some different problems, of course. And, you know, we are very lucky to see that the top management is fully engaged. Recently, we had a training, RPA training oh, yeah. with our CEO, which was very, you know, usually it takes three days, but we somehow managed to cut it down to two hours. It was just very... Uh, has become one of the UiPath developers. Yeah, <laughs> like an advocate. <laughs> <laughs> and this also creates like a symbolism within yeah. the organization, yeah. how, how it's been treated by the top management as well. And in terms of strategy, the communication is also very important. That's, that's also key. Internal communication to internal communication. Like mm-hmm. well, because the we treat RPA, AI, all these different technologies uh, that do not replace our workforce employees, but in fact assist them yes. in terms of uh, yes. just increasing their productivity, augment their capabilities, tools that augment their capabilities, so that they could better perform, and they. Uh, they, they they could also better engage with the you know, uh, company as well. So this, how should I say, cultural positioning 
is as important as just you know simply forming teams and doing the just you know field work. So you need to so, have this soft part of this transformation together. So this helps you uh, eliminate uh, potential resistance uh, from the employees, right? So everybody's engaged, everybody's supporting the transformation. Yeah, exactly. It's a mm-hmm. definitely buy-in from the organization because I, and it's easy. It's not only that you position it like that. And once you give them the uh, opportunity to experience what is achievable through RPA, so they, they see it's something easy, easy to adopt. So you don't need to be like a like developer to really go through it. So it's very uh, relevant uh, to the human nature, I would say. Yeah. And getting results in very short period of times is also very powerful. So it also builds trust that it's something easy, has a business impact in a very short period of time. It just, you know, facilitates all the environment. Yeah. Yeah. It's not super perfect, super yeah. powerful. Yeah, sounds, sounds very solid. Okay, lastly, my last question is about future. No? Future. We, yeah, we have been uh, talking about end-to-end uh, automation platform UI, from UiPad. So, um, where do you think it fits uh, into your future plans in terms of automation going yeah. forward? Yes, very good question. Thank you for that. This idea of hyper-automation is something we also pursue because uh, if you look at our you know, transformational uh, initiatives, we have different kinds of capabilities going on, like AI, RPA. So we kind of blend them together to really understand, to really spot different use cases, to resolve such problems that require different capabilities to work perfectly together. And this idea of hyper-automation uh, is still uh, is important to leverage these, you know, uh, like process discovery, process mining together with AI, bringing them together with chatbots. Also, the idea of straight through processing where you actually uh, receive the input from the customer requirements through a chatbot, just, you know, where you utilize AI through NLP or different kind of technologies. And then bring about the change through straight through processing and throughout this process could be easily determined by process mining or process discovery technologies. And if you have this suite, this idea of automation together with its own ecosystem, uh, I think it's perfect. It fits our you know, uh, future plans to uh, leverage such technologies. Yeah. Thank you, Seizgin. A very insightful conversation.